There's a troubling allegation tonight about the Dallas County Juvenile Detention Center. District Attorney John Cruzeau says it is a place where young people are learning how to commit more serious crimes instead of being rehabilitated. Now, county officials are demanding action to speed reforms. Ken Kaltoff has the story you will see only on NBC5. A string of armed robberies terrorized Oak Lawn area businesses in the month of May. Among the targets was a smoke shop on Cedar Springs, where an employee says he was threatened, beaten, and robbed May 8th. For eight crimes, police arrested four teenagers, three just 16 years old, one just 15. You know, they graduate into these type of crimes. They just, they just they don't get up in the morning and decide that we're going to conduct uh, aggravated robberies throughout the city. The Dallas County District Attorney says one place they learn is the county's juvenile detention center. Really, the way this whole thing has been operated has been the exact opposite of rehabilitation. A study of the detention center this year found two-thirds of kids should have been released within days, but were kept with other offenders for months. Juvenile cases are confidential, so we can't verify them. But D.A. John Cruzeau says he should be able to see all the records. He's now seeking reports he says juvenile officials have on program effectiveness. And the purpose of going through the program is to create rehabilitation and public safety, and they wind up killing people. Yes, Cruzeau says murder has been the next crime several times by kids who came through here. They should answer the consequences for those young stupid mistakes. But what we shouldn't do is try to teach them how to commit the next crime, how to become meaner. Dallas County commissioners are suing juvenile officials for records that could show how long children have been kept in solitary confinement in cells like this, with only walls to entertain them for days at a time for lack of proper supervision. It becomes uh, imperative that we get more information so that we can adopt certain changes over there. Very brash, very heinous, and very violent. That's how the Dallas police chief describes the arrested teens who struck Oak Lawn. In Dallas, Ken Kaltoff, NBC5. The Dallas County Juvenile Department Director has not responded to our request for comment. Police say one of those juveniles has now been linked to it. Well, the court appointed monitor overseeing Rikers Island is asking a judge to hold the city in contempt over violence and mismanagement at the facility. All right, that move could set the stage for a potential federal takeover. Fox 5's Morgan McKay breaks down the allegations and how the mayor is addressing them. A federal monitor appointed to oversee the city's jails is urging a judge to hold the Department of Correction and its commissioner in contempt for failing to make safety improvements. Public advocate Jamani Williams, who has visited Rikers numerous times, says this action is not surprising, but it does mark a notable shift, and he hopes the city takes this warning. It's saddening to hear. I hope the administration is not as dismissive of this report as it was uh, from the last report. In a new nearly 300 page report, the monitor Steve Martin detailed numerous incidents in which correction officers lost control at the jails. For example, this picture included in the report shows a day in May where detainees at Rikers blocked an officer from intervening in a group assault. The monitor also found the department staff used head strikes against detainees nearly 400 times last year. To put that in perspective, the Los Angeles jail system only had 52 head strikes last year. Something's going on there wrong. And so I, I want to make clear uh, that the way Rikers is set up, there's a safety issue for everyone. In the report, the monitor says that the jail safety is rapidly deteriorating and is only growing worse under the Adams administration. We reached out to the Department of Correction, who referred us to the mayor's office. In a statement, they said, quote, we are prepared to fully defend against any contempt motion, and the record will reflect the important and necessary steps New York City has taken to make continued progress. We tried to catch up with the mayor at his press availability, but his team refused to allow reporters to ask off-topic questions. We were able to shout one question as he left, and he responded that he supports the Department of Correction Commissioner Louis Molina. I love Commissioner uh, uh, Molina. He's doing an amazing job. Last year, 19 people died at Rikers Island, the highest number in a quarter of a century. On August 10th, a judge will look at whether to appoint a federal receiver to take over operations of city jails. Reporting outside Rikers,
Lawmakers, I'm Morgan Mackay, Fox 5. Legal trouble tonight for the Adams administration as it struggles to reduce violence on Rikers Island. A federal monitor says reforms have stagnated and the city should be held in contempt. CBS2 political reporter Marcia Kramer here now with the details. Marcia. Well, Maurice and Christine, to be fair, Mayor Adams inherited a nightmare when he took over the Rikers Island jail complex from Bill de Blasio. But after 18 months in office, the federal monitor is losing patience with the pace of reforms and the efforts to stop violence and the excessive use of force. The monitor is correct in saying enough is enough. Marilyn Rowas, director of Legal Aid's Prisoner Rights Project, reacting to the latest hard-hitting report by the federal monitor evaluating things like staff misconduct and excessive use of force. The monitor found many of the initiatives remain incomplete or have not been addressed, and there has been a disturbing level of regression in a number of essential practices. Among the findings, doors not properly secured, corrections officers abandoning posts, officers often miss weapons during routine searches. Whatever efforts have been made have failed because the conditions on Rikers Island are worse. More people are being hurt. Force is more injurious and the mismanagement that pervades the department is even more prejudicial. To a spokesperson for the mayor insisted, quote, we take our obligation to keep people in our charge very seriously and remain committed to continued reform and working with the monitor. What we inherited in 2022 was a mess. And we're turning that mess around. Mayor Adams defending his stewardship of Rikers when I interviewed him and Corrections Commissioner Louis Molina last month. It followed another scathing report on violence there. Why have you decided to call us here today and to show us these lengthy videos of the same instances and incidents that were in this report. We wanted to show that we have nothing to hide. We think that these incidents not only portray the level of restraint and empathy, we think they also show a level of environmental improvement and cleanliness of our facilities. Since he took office, the commissioner has reduced use of force incidents by 14 percent, according to the DOC, and has cut officer absentee rates from a high of about 2,600 per day at the height of the pandemic to 71 as of June 7th. The numbers are showing how we're moving in the right direction. We had previous administrations that were doing just the opposite. It's clear, however, that it's not enough, that the brutality and the harm being suffered is worse now. Well, the federal monitor has asked a judge to hold the city in contempt to force faster progress. The mayor's spokesperson says the city should not be held in contempt. Now, legal aid has asked a judge to appoint an outside receiver to run the jails. A report released yesterday on the troubled Rikers Island jail complex, and it could lead to a federal takeover. CBS News' Elijah Westbrook has a closer look at what the court-appointed monitor has found. This nearly 300-page federal monitor report could be the key to a potential federal takeover of Rikers Island. The court-appointed monitor described a disturbing level of regression in a number of essential practices. Also, that many initiatives required by an action plan remain incomplete or have not been addressed. The report comes less than a month after a federal judge said she... room, another person has died. Department of Correction custody. The DOC tells us 60 year old Ricky Howell was receiving long term medical care at the Belleville Bellevue rather hospital prison ward since February and passed away yesterday evening. Howell was arrested on Staten Island for burglary back in 2021 and sent to Rikers. We're told the medical examiner will determine his exact cause of death. According to the Legal Aid Society, Howell is the fifth New Yorker to die in DOC custody this year.